Well, the first week we got, we got a lot of crazy stuff to happen in the first week of college basketball. I got to tell you, that there was Ohio State, you know, barely, barely hanging on with Akron. Of course, you know, the Champions Classic, uh, it, it delivered. It delivered. It definitely delivered in different ways than I expected. You know, some things, you know, maybe I got a little bit wrong. I forgot to talk about a couple guys. Uh, maybe some things went wrong. Of course, you know, to add insult to injury, Gonzaga decided to say, you know what? Screw Texas. Screw Timmy didn't have to do that. He didn't have to do that. He, he, he didn't have to score 37 on us like that. But he did. Just added insult to injury on Saturday night. Villanova UCLA was a classic. A all-time classic for the ages. I'm telling you. Uh, just blow for blow. You know, Jamie Jacquez Jr. especially for UCLA. My goodness. Jermaine Samuels. Villanova. My goodness. My goodness, what a game that was that went to overtime if you watched it late Friday night and going into Saturday to start your Saturday strong. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that was week one. I know there's some other things as well that have happened. Uh, I'm not even going to talk about everything because, again, we don't, we don't have time to talk about everything right now. You know, if we can get all more in-depth with that, you know, later on. Um... Once again, I have four games to talk about here that I want to talk about at least. Um, Illinois fans, get ready. Don't don't flame me like you did last year, okay? But anyway, let, let's get into it because we start on Monday night. Um, I believe it's one of the Gabbett tip-off games, so this one's going to be very interesting here. Illinois and Marquette. Oh boy, this one's going to be interesting for a lot of reasons. Y'all remember Shaka Smart, right? Yeah, Shaka. Shaka Smart's now leading this Marquette team, and I'm surprised Daryl Morsell transferred from Maryland, but again, you know, you know the way COVID played, you know, a lot of things into, there was a lot of factors in play for a lot of these teams and a lot of these players, so you now, you know, lots of transfers and stuff like that are going to different programs, and this one should be interesting for this Marquette team, um, they're, they're 2-0 and right now, um, they, at uh, they, they put up 70-something points in both of their games so far. Illinois, for right now, you have to look to Jacob Grandison. You have to look to him. You know, Kofi Coburn won't be back until the Cincinnati game. I'm, I'm, I think that will be next week, if I'm not mistaken. That won't be that won't be this week. It'll be the week after. So, uh, I don't think I'll be talking about Illinois-Cincinnati at all. Of course, you know the eight. Of course, you know the rankings come out tomorrow. So by the time tomorrow, by the time tomorrow, you know, I mean, by the time you see this video, it'll be tomorrow, um, for the most part. Um, but the Illinois Marquette is going to be interesting again. You know, I'm just wondering how Shaka Smart is going to do moving on from Texas. You know, um, it, it 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 looks like it's working out so far, but this is really a big test. You know. Again, for both of these teams. Really big for both these teams, you know. I mean, again, Illinois, you know, trying to continue to prove themselves, continue to make themselves into a Big Ten power. Marquette trying to get out of the hole, you know, trying to climb up in the Big East, you know. Um, again, I'm wondering, I'm wondering how this will go. Two games on Tuesday that I want to look into here. Um, a doubleheader on Tuesday on ESPN that they've got showing. First up is Virginia and Houston. Now, Virginia got stunned by maybe one of the biggest, you know, bizarre things that happened in the opening week of college basketball. Uh, I gotta tell you, stunned them. Virginia did bounce back with a huge victory, you know, again, against Radford with Jaden Gardner, you know, on the inside as the forward. He's been tearing it up so far, and I think he might be ready to do that again. But Houston, Houston, oh boy. This team went very, very far in the NCAA tournament last year. And a big contributor to that team that went far is back. We're talking Marcus Sasser. My goodness, man. My goodness. I mean, again, Houston was a Final Four team last year. And I mean, you know, th this 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 is the type of thing that you know just. It, I mean, come on, very talented Houston team. We're talking a very very talented Houston basketball team. I mean, my goodness, 
this one's gonna be this one's gonna be really really interesting to see how they could do because I mean again, you know, Houston and again I mean they they put up they, they beat up on Rice you know I'm looking at it right now they beat up on Rice and I mean come on it's it's the type of thing of legends it's the type of thing of legends so this one's gonna be one hell of a matchup I don't know what kind of game we're gonna get from this I don't know what kind of game we're gonna get you know. Is Tony Bennett going to get this Virginia team ready to make it a low-scoring game, or are we going to have a happy, fun shootout or something like that? Because, I mean, again, I don't know what kind of game we're going to get. The game that comes that comes on two hours after that, a little bit over two hours after that, is BYU in Oregon. And BYU has a nice, talented guard by the name of Alex Marcello. And I mean, he was clutch against San Diego State. Huge win for BYU to start the season again. I don't know what's wrong with the West Coast Conference this year. I mean, they've been they've been beating you know team other teams in in the West region, you know, in, in the Western region of the country, you know, like back to back, like Santa Clara beat Stanford, you know. Um, I mean, my goodness, again, you know, just a lot of weird stuff going on. West Coast Conference having a lot of momentum, and again, that 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 preconceived notion about the West Coast Conference that it's just Gonzaga and a bunch of nobodies is completely wrong. Again, we need to stop that. Um, but for Oregon, Oregon's an interesting case because, I mean, I don't think I watched this team a lot last year, and the guy that I'm thinking that's going to be doing a lot of good things for the Ducks is Eric Williams Jr. He, he's been playing pretty good for them so far, and I wonder, again, you know, how this game will go. Because, I mean, it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good one. I can tell you that right now. You know, it's, it's going to be really interesting to see, you know, what kind of game, what kind of game these two teams can send. Because, I mean, again, BYU, you know, they, they have, you know, of course they have Gonzaga way down the road in January, February. You know, but this, this one's going to be big for them now. Because, seeing the BYU is one of those teams you look for in the West Coast Conference that could be racking up, you know, wins to get into the NCAA tournament. So, and Oregon, on the other hand, Oregon, I know a lot of people, you know, uh, I'm not sure how many people are pretty high on this team, but I do know that this is a very talented team. I think, you know, again, I don't, I don't know how, I don't know how much though, but I'll see. You know, on Tuesday night, how how talented this Oregon team is. I mean, again, this one's gonna be fun. The fourth and final game I want to cover here is Michigan and UNLV. Of course, Juwan Howard is the thumbnail, boys. Oh boy, this is a crew. This is a damn good crew for Michigan. I, I'm telling you right now, Hunter Dickinson, he's back. Devontae Jones, he's emerging, and you know, Michigan is looking like. It's looking like another big, big time Big Ten team this year. I mean, the same thing as it always has been for Michigan. You know, just huge, just a huge, huge upside for Michigan. You know, coming into this year, and they also have a test against Seton Hall earlier in the week. And I'm wondering how that's going to go. I believe that's like on a Wednesday or something like that. I'm not gonna be. I don't think I'm. You know, particularly eager to look into that game. But um, it again. Should be interesting. This this matchup in particular is way more intriguing because of the way UNLV's defense has played so far. They've allowed what I think they've allowed 50 points, like about 50 points a game. You know, in both of their games so far. Yeah, I mean it, it's it's proven to be really interesting. So I'm wondering how this matchup will go. And it's a really late game. We're talking, I believe it's 11:30 at night. 12:30 night. I think this might be a neutral site if I'm not mistaken, but my goodness, that is late. That is really, really late for a college basketball game. Uh, I don't know who, who's thinking that it might be. A, I think it might be a neutral site game. If I'm not mistaken. Um, but, but yeah, yeah, big time game there. Um, there's a couple. There's at least a couple of other games that I do want to mention. You know, here uh, I'm not going to go in depth about them. Again, how about Ohio State? Yeah, you know, a lot of people are high on Ohio State this year. They're taking on Xavier in a in another huge Big Ten, Big East type battle. I think it's the Gavit Tip Off games for everybody, if I'm not mistaken. The Big Ten and the Big Big East. I I can't remember my challenges and stuff very well. 
But I do know the Hall of Fame tip off classic is that is that is this weekend. It'll be November twentieth and twenty first. Um, one of the one of the games will air on ABC. I know it'll be on a Sunday. But again, I, I don't think again because it's the weekend because you know the NFL and college football are a thing. Not going to be particularly in, in, interested in this pair of matchups here. But I mean, Villanova. We've, we've talked about Villanova already. Tennessee. Interesting team there. North Carolina, you know, it's North Carolina. And Purdue. Purdue is a huge, huge team, you know, that, that's looking, you know, a lot of people are high on them. And uh, I got to tell you, I, I think I might be high on them too. But, I mean, I'll have to see some more from all four of these teams. You know, obviously I've seen, the obviously I've seen Philadelphia's, what, first game. That, that's obvious. But... The other three teams haven't really seen much at all from them yet. Plus, Ohio State haven't seen anything from them either. But the but the four games I got this week, you know, I, I think I got a pretty good list, you know, here. Tell me what other games you guys are looking at this week. I don't want to know what what y'all are looking at in, in regards to College Haskell. There was a good number of views last week. It, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't particularly you know a bad number. It was a pretty intriguing number that you know has me intrigued. So I want, so I want to know. First off, what's your team? Second off, what what kind of, what kind of games y'all looking at next week? You know what your team is looking like next week in the realm of college basketball. And you know you you know the drill. Like, share, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell, do all that good stuff, and I'll see you again. Coming in to week number three as we go into Thanksgiving. And my goodness. Oh boy. Thanksgiving weekend. That that that's gonna be one hell of a week on Thanksgiving. And you already know two and you already know two of two of the games I'm gonna be talking about on Thanksgiving week. Oh boy. But I can't wait to see y'all next Sunday, you know, next Sunday evening, you know, to get wrapped up about this and um, yeah, y'all take care, and let's have a good week, everybody. Let's do this. We got a long week to go. Got a long, long week to go, so...